In studio with us right now is Eddie Gokenauer from the Berkeley County Council, which hopefully soon when they pass the law in Charleston, which I hope they do, is going to be called a commission again. Eddie, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Great. Thank you. Good. Appreciate you being here. Sure. Like the jacket. You're looking good, man. Thank you. Doing well. Yeah. Look in the position. That's right. You're the man. I can, you know, I can take it off real quick and crawl underneath the car and fix something. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know you can, too. Yeah. That's the thing. Hey, uh, we were talking about East Palestine and that derailment with Senator Capito in the last segment. Obviously, your expertise in emergency services comes into play here, too. And uh, maybe you can give us your viewpoint on this and what could be done in the future to prevent these sorts of things. You know, I, there's, there's always been accidents on the rail. You know, I, th I think that the rail industry uh, years ago, they do separate, you know, their their extreme materials from each other. Uh, you know, so if you got something that's really bad on the rail, you know, like perhaps, uh, you know, even propane on the rail, there may be a couple other cars with uh, non-flammable or non-explosive type uh, materials close to them. But when everything goes haywire, it, it doesn't take them long to all land up in the same place, basically. You know, to me, I think that the biggest thing out of all of this is communication uh, with the public to inform them and, and be honest right up front from the get-go, to, to be very transparent in what's going on and what needs to be done to correct it. You know, it's, that's a big deal for that community. And if it happened here, it would be a big deal for this community as well, something that we would not be able to handle by ourselves. You know, so you would need to bring in those experts that do this every day. Uh, you, know, you know, we would bring in, uh, ask that the EPA, the DEP would be you know, from the state. And then, uh, you know, the rail, they have contractors themselves that they would bring in to help uh, mitigate this emergency. Um, so really... You know, our role locally, you know, it very early is to do an evacuation, um, you know, and, and just, you know, I think the biggest thing is is to allow the public to know what's going on and what the what precautions to take. And uh, and that's why we've done several things throughout this county. Uh, currently, uh, we're working on a commodity flow study to know what goes up and down the road to also include the rail to know what goes you know through our through our county uh, on rail so that we are you know our, like our hazmat teams would have the opportunity to train on those particular pieces of equipment or if there's equipment that we don't have to to give us uh, an opportunity to get the equipment that we need so you know we've done those things um, we've recognized those issues you know getting ready for a new study now uh, another thing that we've done that I'm very proud of is, um, you know, we have what's called Alert Berkeley to notify people uh, in the event of something catastrophic to give them direction uh, and how to how to uh, uh, receive help. And uh, but basically is the notification to get out of the area if we need to do a mass evacuation. John Gilstrap. Yeah. It we are the land of at-grade railroad crossings here in the Eastern Panhandle and, and throughout. And, of course, that's that's always a concern. What, what, is that, what does that mean to the average person who's that not That means as opposed to over trestles, mm -hmm. bridges, or, or underpasses, overpasses, um, the arms come down and, and, and you wait for the train to go by. Thank you. And, you know, up on uh, Beddington Road, right next, to, right next to the fire station is, that, is, is the uh, train tracks. Is there an effort? I, don't, I guess it would be a federal thing to to just make the railroad crossings safer. Well, I tell you, I think it's been quite a while, John, since we've had an accident at a crossing. Um, you know, most of them now, uh, for the most part, do have cross uh, bars. They do have the lights. Uh, very few private crossings do we have now. Uh, Winchester and Western, in particular, has you know closed a lot of those or several of those, but. Um, you know, I can assure you that when that train derailment occurs, it will be nowhere close that you yeah. can get to it easily. It, you know, because when you think about it, they, they split a lot of farms. Uh, so it will be out in that farm field or out through that woods, uh, mm -hmm. making it very difficult to be able to get to. So, uh, you know, those, those people in, uh, in Ohio, they've got their hands full right now. Uh, you know, 
I think it's been burning now. For, well, it was burned for like two days, I believe. It's you know it's out now. But you know, do you allow it to burn with the air contamination, or do you put it out? And now it's a threat of having uh, groundwater contamination. So you know that's where you really need to uh, depend upon those true experts uh, to give you guidance. Also, is there any idea, any pressure, any thoughts? with the form energy plant and as we bring in more and more industry into the eastern panhandle to uh leverage their presence to ask them to buy us stuff for emergency response some of that specialized equipment that doesn't it's hard to justify on a municipal budget just because you, it is so specialized and so rarely used but when you need it you you need it and you better have it yeah exactly you know, uh, i mean we've got we've got detection units that we can set up as much as a, a mile away to sniff the air send that information back to a computer, you know, back into a command post or something of that nature. Um, and then, of course, you've got detection units. So you can, if you can get a sample, determine exactly what it is and then you know, figure out how you're going to handle it. But no, you know, most of these corporations, uh, they, they will help you. You know, mm -hmm. if you approach them and say, look, you know, we know that we've seen your rail cars coming in. We don't have that particular expertise, training, equipment, whatever it may be. Uh, I feel very confident that they would help uh, mitigate that. Matt Harvey. Good morning, Councilman Gokenhauer. Good, Good morning. to see you. Good to see you, Matt. Hey, so I, I'm curious. Uh, Berkeley County Council has moved towards career firefighters. Yes. Is, it, is it my understanding that you're the first county to do so, paid fire staff? Yes, sir. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that and, and how that's going? Well, I think it's going well. I, th I think that we're to the point now where, uh, you know, currently we're, we're 12 hours a day, five days a week. We have one station, which is Baker Heights, is 24-7. Um, every volunteer fire department in the county has asked for 24-hour staffing. So where do we find those dollars? You know, so that's, that's currently the, the, the job of finding those funds. You know, it's no disrespect to the volunteer fire departments. You know, the, the call demands for them have reached a point where they just cannot honestly keep up consistently. Now, there's, there's days they get right out the door and, and go do a great job, and then there's times that they fail. So, you know, who wants to flip that coin, you know, uh, of the time that they're not available? So it's, it's just like this. Today, you know, if at three o'clock in the morning, if you call for an ambulance, you go get an ambulance on your way because we have 24-hour service. If you call for law enforcement, you're going to get it. They're they're on the way. However, if you call for a, a fire truck, you wake up in the morning, you know, and you smell smoke in your house. The closest volunteer fire department to you may or may not get out the door within a reasonable amount of time. So. Uh, I think that this county has reached a point where where we do need to look at 24-hour staffing. We we still absolutely need those volunteers. The fire fee is in place and has been uh, since the 80s to take care of their equipment, to take care of those facilities, uh, and those things need to continue. Now, the next component that the fire fee needs to take care of is staffing. So it's 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 a supplement to fire service, not a sub, doesn't supplant it. Oh no 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 no! We we work hand in hand and have since day one, and it's it's truly it was I'm not saying it was the easiest thing to do because it's always different, difficult to change uh, the fire service. It's very very difficult, and you know, folks have pride that they've provided those services in those communities for a long time. We respect that they have their own culture. I understand that. Uh, so I mean I was I was I've been part of the fire service you know since I was honestly I was 15 years old, but uh, so I understand Berkeley County Fire Service very clearly. Um, Do you think that made a difference, your experience in helping? Oh, I think so. Easing yeah. into it that yeah. they trusted you. Yeah, and, you know they've seen me, they they knew me, uh, they they know that I will work as hard as anybody on the fire ground, you know. Um, so I, I had earned their respect early in. And uh, when Mr. Stubblefield and I met with them, what we said is exactly what we did. And uh, so our word, our trust uh, was proven. So, uh, you know, there was nobody really fighting and screaming and everything else. It was a few roadblocks, but you'll have that. And, you know, so you just, sure. you know, the biggest thing, once again, was just being open and honest and transparent. And when somebody threw up a roadblock, 
find a way around it because at the end of the day, the only thing that we really and truly cared about was getting people help. Any thought to additional fire stations? Well, there, yes, yes, um, there is. Um, that's something for the fire rescue and the fire board, you know, to uh, take care of, even, even though we may suggest it or request it. But uh, staffing is truly, I mean, we've got a couple firehouses that are really not being utilized to their potential uh, on Mountain Lake Road, for example, or there in Pikeside. There's, there's two substations uh, that truly aren't being utilized uh, to their fullest potential. Uh, I, I would really like to see, uh, and, and Beddington's going to build a new station. Uh, the fire board's going to build a new station there in the Spring Mills area right there at Brown Road. So I think that that will cut down, well, I know it will, the distance to be able to get to like Grade Road area. Uh, that Marlowe area today, it's a, it's a run to get there. Uh, even though Williamsport will come across, you know, I don't feel that we should totally depend on Williamsport Fire Department and out-of-state departments to take care of our folks. So, Do we have mutual aid agreements with, with the various counties? If, oh, yes. Yeah, we have mutual aid agreements all the way around us. So yeah. Jefferson will run with Berkeley County sure, to absolutely. a house on the first alarm? Yes. Okay. Well, yes. they Yes, they right. will. The counties do. The city of Martinsburg will not run a first alarm with us. Uh, but on mutual aid, they will absolutely support us. Eddie Gokenauer is our guest here on the program. He is the vice president of the Berkeley County Council. Hopefully, they'll be known as a commission again soon. And speaking of that, would take a uh, law in Charleston. Are there any specific laws that you're watching or legislation you're watching right now and the council as a whole in Charleston as to how it'll affect counties, Eddie? Yeah, the uh, the uh, uh, property tax, uh, excise tax. The rebate uh, back to the yeah. counties. Uh, that's John Hardy's bill. Uh, watching that very closely. Um, still not a whole lot of movement on. I think the I think the House finally moved it out of out of committee. Uh, moves to the full uh, House, and I think that the Senate has a bill similar to it. Uh, another bill I've been watching has been the jail bill. As you all know, my well, some of you may not know my position on the jail bill. But, you know, my opinion is that jail bills should not be paid by the counties. It's a state-owned jail. People are in there on state charges. They go to a state magistrate, and the state should pay the bill. If you want to stand around and tell us how much money you have and how great everything is, then pay your bill. That's how I feel about it. And, uh, you know, that's $2.8 million that we spend a year. That's a, that's a $2.8 million check that we write that honestly could pay for our fire service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, well, that also pays for Martinsburg's arrest as well, that yeah, $2.8 million. Yes, it does. You know, um, so, you know, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to ever get this thing to, to work out, you know, but like, but like, should it, should the arresting authority pay that jail bill? You know, if they're arrested by the state police, should the state of West Virginia pay it? If, if they're arrested by the city, should the city pay that bill and sentence them? And they have their own court system. You know, and they're the ones that they don't, they don't use our uh, day report system. They don't use our community service. So our home confinement, you know, so we've done a lot of things to reduce our jail bill because uh, it would be around, uh, I think the numbers I was told was about $6.5 million had we not have these different programs. We've got 300 people in home confinement right now. You know, they're, they're not on, they're, they weren't violent criminals, but they did violate the law. Uh, they are held accountable, so uh, but it keeps them with their family, keeps them employed. Um, so it's it's been a really a good program for us. Eddie, will there be changes coming to the stormwater rates? Uh, this was a uh, text sent to me well, two weeks ago, maybe, in regards to some discussions that were going on. I, I honestly, we have not discussed the rates yet. Uh, there's a possibility that there will be. Uh, you know, we we did. Uh, last week agreed to be a co-permittee on the stormwater uh, permit uh, with the stormwater district. Uh, you know, we have st we have staff that reviews, uh, like our engineer, reviews the, uh, the stormwater designs and approves those. Uh, so we felt as if, if we're going to control some things, that we should be a part of, of the responsibility as well. So we, we'll go as a co-permittee. Uh, it was our request to only impose this 
permit and ordinance on the urbanized area. So everything really west of the of the mountain will be out of the urbanized area. So so I do see in the future that there will be, you know, because today, you know, like I've heard you know many times before, and I don't disagree, uh, P&G pays the same thing as I pay. Right. You know, but in, in, in saying that, they've also spent millions of dollars, you know, for their stormwater management system. So uh, I think there needs to be credits back, paid back. But still, at the end of the day, uh, I, I, th- I feel as if industry that has a large footprint should be paying their fair way. That was one of the big complaints about that system when it was set up. Many folks felt it was unfairly applied to them sure. based on the criteria. And if you're looking into fixing that issue, then you, you're going to make a lot of people happy. Well, I, I'd really like to make them happy if the legislature would work with us and uh, impose the one-cent sales tax because I feel with the one-cent sales tax, uh, because it would then have a funding mechanism, and that's one of the requirements. You know, we could we could fully fund our sheriff's office, we could fully fund our fire service, and we could absorb the rain tax. Do away with the rain tax; it's it's in the one cent tax. That would be my goal, to because it's everybody hates it, including myself. I don't like it either. The rain tax. The rain tax. I don't, I don't think they'd like another cent on their sales tax either, though. Yeah, it's a penny on a dollar, a penny on a dollar. So the, the great thing here is with the interstate going through, we have a lot of people stopping uh, at the convenience stores and whatnot. Uh, yeah, penny on the dollar. So, Hey, let's talk about parks. Bob Williams was in a month ago and showed us the master plan for uh, going forward with parks and rec in Berkeley County. Uh, your thoughts on the master plan and in sp- uh, specifics, uh, are there any parts of the county you'd like to see some improvements made? Well, I mean, the master plan covered a, a pretty broad area. Um, you know, it had a lot of focus on Poor House. Uh, you know, Poor House is a beautiful park. Um, I, personally, I, I'm not 100% sold on the uh, soccer field uh, layout of that because we have a nice soccer field already uh, that's been developed and everybody in the county knows where it is. Uh, I would like to see us to take those particular dollars and reinvest at the DuPont fields and make it a much bigger complex where you could have a lot of tournaments and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, th- that we have a plan. Uh, it covered a lot of areas, like I say, um, kind, of, kind of on the side, you know, was uh, the, river, uh, the river park. Um, but... Yeah, I know it's just at the city, you know, they were looking at uh, including uh, Lake Thomas, mm-hmm. you know, include the, into the walking park. So that would be a nice addition to it as well. Getting access to the Opecan would be huge. It would, you know, and, you know, we're, we're, we're making strides on, uh, on the park in Inwood. You know, we just, that house was just removed. The entrance uh, will be, uh, that will be the entrance where we just had purchased a piece of property uh, to get into that 22-acre park. There's a lot of excitement uh, in Inwood and the sur- surrounding area about the park, um, and of course the north the north park at uh, Spring Mills. Uh, things are in motion there, so there's there's a lot of stuff going on to improve the quality of life. You know, I just I spoke with Steve uh, last week who has spoke with Bob uh, to try and do some stuff at Rudy Park uh, and Tomahawk uh, to improve those facilities as well. So. There's some excitement out there about, you know, improving stuff for kids to get involved in and and, and good quality family uh, entertainment. John. We talked a lot about, <clears throat> excuse me, fire and rescue. On the law enforcement side, how many deputies are there on duty on an average night in Berkeley County? Well, you know, uh, John, I'm not sure <clears throat> of their scheduling. Uh, we have 66 uniformed deputies. So uh, I would hope that, that 12 to 14 uh, but I know with vacations or sick leave or, you know, may in fact dwindle, but, uh, and they've just, they've just, uh, they just went to a 12 hour shift, uh, to try and get some overlay on some of their, uh, busier times and stuff. So they're looking at doing different things, uh, as well. And is the law enforcement side fully staffed? It's currently not. Uh, they're currently down five officers. So yeah, they've, they've, uh, they've got a need there for five uh, police officers. Matt Harvey. 
when I was driving in here on 45, I noticed that there's a sign that, that's advertising for Hagerstown police officers starting at $81,000. Have you seen this sign? I have. And with a, a potential bonus of $20,000. Um, is is that pretty much what Berkeley County's dealing with with when it's allocating money for salaries to the different agencies and, and elected offices? Yeah, Matt, it's a challenge, you know. Um, <clears throat> Eighty one thousand dollars. There's an asterisk on that though. There it, is. Says, it says depending on experience and that's I know, but that's right. that gets your attention. It does. That's yeah, real money. It, it does. And I and I and I get it. You know, <clears throat> you know, I had an opportunity years ago. Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> you know, I, I went to a, a friend of mine was was working in Fairfax. He'd been there a couple years, and I'm like, man, you know, we were struggling. Just we just weren't making money. You know, firemen, policemen, school teachers, yeah, they don't make any money. So, you know, we always worked another job. So, you know, I'm like, look, man, I said, y'all hiring? He said, oh my God, yes, Eddie. He said, come on down. He said, he said, I'll guarantee you, you can get hired. You know, cause he he knew me. So I, I went with him one day, and I drove around parts of Fairfax that you know where he worked and whatnot. And I'm like, you know what? We stopped and had a bite to. Thank you. Uh, we stopped and had a, a a bite to eat, and I said, you know what? Honestly, I've not seen one person I really care about here. And that's the truth. So I said, I'll figure it out, and we did. You know, I, I went back home, and and you know, uh, I I don't regret one day. I loved I loved to work where I live. You know, I can. I know people. I know a lot of people, and when they're hurting, I, sometimes I had the opportunity to help them immediately. If not, I could help them the next day. So there's a lot of value in work where you live, and there's a lot of pride involved in that. So uh, the guy that wants to chase the money, you know, so be it. You know, if money is that what makes you happy, so be it. Uh, you need money. You know, you you want your kids to wear the same shoes and coats that the other kids do so you just got to figure it out you know do you know what the entry level pay scale is for deputies here i don't write off the, the question for nate Harmon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i, I don't write off hey i lived in fairfax county for two years that takes years off your life man there's, there's something to be said for not sitting in bumper to bumper traffic at 11 o'clock at night yeah, well, I've got some. You know, I've got a couple friends on DC. You know, you know, they they get up at three thirty in the morning or three o'clock in the morning to head in so they don't catch the traffic. What well, call it life is that? You know, you be have to go to bed at six or seven. I live that life here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I feel sorry for you. Thank you, Judge. Yes, probably for many a, reasons. Pro- probably a really expensive bed they sleep on, though. And all that money they're making. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well. Eddie. Final word is yours. We're just about out of time. You know, I, I just I number one. Thanks for the opportunity to come in again. You know, I, I will tell you that that the county is working very hard. We're working hard to serve the public that we've been elected to do, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm just humbled and privileged to be a part of this. So thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.